Hello, I'm Dr. Dean Seidlinger, Oregon's Health Officer and State Epidemiologist. I want to speak to you today about the current landscape of the COVID-19 pandemic here in Oregon and about the critical importance for all of us to follow the recommended public health protocols this Labor Day weekend. The Delta variant continues to ravage communities across Oregon. Our hospitals are scrambling to avoid being overtopped by record numbers of COVID-19 patients. Daily cases and hospitalizations, and sadly, recently, deaths associated with COVID-19 have been hovering at or near pandemic highs over the past several weeks. And our newest modeling report suggests we can expect more of the same in the coming weeks. That is, unless more adult Oregonians get vaccinated, we all wear masks when we're in indoor public places and when we're outdoors among crowds, and also that we reconsider the activities that we do in the coming weeks as COVID-19 cases continue at the highest levels seen throughout the pandemic here in Oregon. Over the past two weeks, we have established new records for daily cases and hospitalizations. Our most recent COVID-19 weekly report tallied 16,252 new cases, the eighth consecutive weekly increase. That is 13 times higher than the reported cases for the week ending July 4th. Last week, there were 119 reported COVID-19 related deaths. We have reported 106 over the first three days of this week alone. On August 1st, OHA reported 325 patients who were hospitalized with COVID-19 related illness. Through this week, that number had risen to a record high 1,178. On August 1st, there were 100 COVID-19 positive patients occupying beds in our intensive care units across Oregon. By this week, that total had climbed to 358, an astounding 258% increase. Our hospitals have reached the saturation point where health systems are not able to provide the care to everyone arriving at their doors. That means fewer beds for anyone who experiences a medical incident, be it a broken leg, a heart attack, or injuries from a car crash. Needed surgeries and procedures are being delayed, and it is the breaking point we have all dreaded and one that we must avoid. An overwhelming majority of patients with COVID-19 filling these critically needed beds are unvaccinated. I cannot be more direct. This is a crisis that is largely being driven by people who have not yet been vaccinated against COVID-19. Unlike during the earlier days of the pandemic, we now have access to safe and highly effective vaccines. I urge everyone who is eligible for vaccination to take advantage of this life-saving opportunity for yourself, for your families, and for your communities. As we head into the Labor Day holiday, I urge everyone to please think hard about how you plan to celebrate this weekend. The decisions we all make over this weekend will determine whether in the coming weeks we plunge deeper into this crisis of care or we retreat from the cliff's edge. Our healthcare system is literally hanging in the balance. If we follow the recommendations to wear masks and reconsider our gatherings, we can reverse this tidal wave of disease and bring a quicker end to this pandemic. The stakes have never been higher. We cannot drop our guard. Let me pause here for a moment and share with you a personal message. I just recited the numbers and trends for recent cases and deaths. I want to talk to you about my daily ritual to remind us all that each of those numbers represents a person who is loved and a life lived. Every morning as a state health officer, I get an email containing information from the death certificates from the previous day that mention COVID-19. Every morning, I open that list and review the names, the birthdays, 
and the medical conditions, including COVID-19, that contributed to their deaths. That is the information I am given about these individuals, our neighbors, our fellow Oregonians. But each name represents so much more. It could be a mother, son, best friend, grandparent, brother, beloved coworker, niece, or an uncle. And every single one of these individuals leaves behind grieving loved ones. I think about the impacts they may have had during their lives, none of it based on what I know from the short amount of data I get, but rather it's a way for my mind to help process the tremendous loss represented by that list each and every single day. What has made this review even harder over the last months is that almost all these deaths were preventable. While the information is not included in my daily list of names, the numbers tell us that almost all of these people were unvaccinated. And I wonder, what could we have done to get them vaccinated? What questions could we have answered? Was there a place in their community that they trusted that we could have directed them to? Were they basing their decision on misinformation that we could have countered? And if they were still adamant about not getting vaccinated, what information could have convinced them to take other steps to protect themselves? I sit silently with these thoughts every morning. Sometimes I get angry. Sometimes I cry, but mostly I just sit, wondering why I'm becoming numb to the grief in the face of this tremendous loss day after day. After this time of reflection, I must move on to the scores of other emails in my inbox. I respond to the questions that are contained. I pass needed information along to my colleagues or offer my thought, thoughts on a pressing issue. I may send a thank you note or a note of support to a colleague facing the challenges of our continued battle against COVID-19. In short, I work even harder to defeat this terrible foe that has taken so much from all of us. And I long for the day when we can put this terrible pandemic behind us, but hope that we never forget the personal tragedy and pain that COVID-19 has extracted from all of us. I want to conclude with a special thank you to my public health colleagues and community partners who continue their hard work every day to help protect Oregonians from COVID-19, despite being physically and emotionally exhausted. I extend my deepest gratitude to the healthcare workers who continue to provide quality care to those who show up, all in the face of exhaustion, delaying needed care because of capacity, and in the face of immense losses, which they don't even have time to fully grieve. To all the Oregonians who are ill, worried about sick loved ones, or grieving the loss of a loved one, my thoughts are with you. So everybody, please be safe this weekend. Postpone plans if you can. Gather small. Go outside. Wear a mask. Get vaccinated if you're not already. Um, and on behalf of the Oregon Health Authority, have a happy and most of all healthy holiday weekend.